Temporal Forces is ready to boom, and I'm gonna explain why in just a moment. However, for today, I am gifting these two incredible PSA 10 cards to two lucky subscribers. In the first place, we have the PSA 10 Dragonair Art Rare. This is a fantastic card from 151, and the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. And in the second spot, we have the PSA 10 Heracross from Clay Burst. Honestly, this is one of the coolest artworks from the Scarlet and Violet era. To win one of these cards, just number one, like the video, Number two, subscribe to the channel with bell notifications turned on. And number three, let me know your favorite Pokemon game and share something good that's happening in your life right now. Now, to know which PSA 10 card you won, just be on the lookout for these two specific emojis, both the Lidden and the Lilligan. If I reply to your comment with Lilligan, then well done, you've won the Heracross. And if you get the Lidden in a lemon tree in your reply, well, it looks like the PSA 10 Dragonair is on the way. And of course, all these gifts are available worldwide, so it's always just a great idea to get involved. And also, if you love the channel and would love to show some additional support, feel free to join with channel memberships. You'll be able to use these custom-built emojis while engaging with the community, and they really help show some additional support to your favorite creators. The link to join is in the description. Now also, regarding the previous giveaway in a previous video, I'm pleased to say that the lucky emoji has been awarded and the gift has already been posted. Now. Before I rip open this Temporal Forces booster box, I wanna to touch on its potential future success. Now I mentioned that Temporal Forces is a little bit in the shadows right now, right? But this set is straight up fire. And do you know why? I mean. Look at the chase cards inside the set. All the special illustration rares are just staying so steady in the market, and it doesn't really seem that these special illustration rares can dip much further. So there's only one direction that these cards can really go once the market decides to get behind them. They definitely look as if they are in a good position to rise. I mean, you've got the Raging Bolt special illustration rare, you have Iron Crown, you've got Gouging Fire, Walking Wake, and the incredible Ghastly illustration rare. The set really does seem to be in a unique position, and one that is super quiet at the moment. Now, not only that, but Temporal Forces did have a lot of rumors relating to short printing on release. So who knows how this will go? And it's anyone's guess how it's gonna perform in the long term, right? Though before opening this booster box, I always love making a bit of an intention wish list of what I'd like to pull from this booster box. So my first pick is the Iron Crown EX. This card is such an iconic card. This special illustration rare was the original chase card of the set before Raging Bolt took it over. Though seriously, this card is sensational. And I also kind of feel like this deserves to be the most expensive card in the set. I mean, the artwork is literally perfection. So this is 100% my top pick. And in the second spot, I'd absolutely love the Airy Special Illustration Rare. Man, what an artwork. This is such a sick card and one that I'd love to pull. I mean, I know it's pretty crazy to be chasing two Special Illustration Rares, though who cares? I'm gonna go try it anyway. And in my third spot is the Ghastly Illustration Rare. Honestly, it's such an amazing card and I'd love to add in my collection. So that's the wish list in action. Let's see what we're working working with. Okay, here we go. Temporal Forces and what a stunning set, dude. I just love how this looks though. I have to admit, I do not like it when the booster boxes come like this. They look a little bit flat. So I'm actually hoping to pull something good out of this set because I don't think that the sealed box looks that nice. But you know, I'm, I'm just, that's the thing. Scarlet and Violet, man, it's, it's been a different era. I have to admit that a lot of people, and you know, a lot of people are talking about it now, that Scarlet and Violet just seems like a crazy different era to what we're used to. But there we go, Temporal Forces, absolutely stunning. And there we go, we have Iron Crown there. What a gorgeous box art. To me, I would just like, I did open Shrouded Fable, what was it, like a few days ago, or, and it was just so bad, dude. I just, I've never seen a set that performed that bad for me. So let's see what we got here. Here we go. Oh, you know what's a good card? That Arbok illustration rare is so sick, dude. I would actually, oh, graphic, chat, oh, and Roaring Moon, not bad. Getting warm, we're, we're cooking, we're cooking. You know what I mean? We've just turned the steam on. We're just cooking, it's getting, it's getting, we're just gonna start. I mean, I did say that with um, Shrouded Fable. I was like, you know what, oh, we're cooking. And we certainly cooked, but we cooked stale porridge with that box opening. It was absolutely dreadful. If you want to see an absolutely dreadful box opening, then I suggest you click that video that's appearing right now in the top corner that, here we go. Oh, here we go, here we go, a Feraligator. Ooh, wow, that's centering. Look at that, that left side versus that right side. That is a massive difference. And I have been, um, I've been getting also into other TCGs. Like a big TCG I'm a big fan of is uh, Raging Raw. It's the new Dragon Ball uh, booster box that's kind of releasing. 
and I'm kind of getting really excited about that TCG. I wouldn't mind getting into other TCGs as well. I've been collecting Yu-Gi-Oh ever since I was a kid, so I'm pretty excited to see what... Oh, there's the Airy. Let's see what we got. Here we go. Ghastly, Salvatore, and... Oh, that's it. Beautiful EX card. And you know what? Why not? Let's cook it there. Let's start it there. I can't remember now how Temporal Forces was seen as a kind of in terms of the pull rates. I think they were pretty decent, but I cannot remember for the life of me. Here we go. Let's go. Lick a tongue, Slugma. What are we working with? Oh, we got a special illustration right here. Bronzong and Fluttermane. I did like, I, I used to play heaps of competitive Pokemon on um on online pretty much, where you could actually battle with Pokemon on, on all the games. I've always been a big fan of that. All right, let's see what we got. Here we go. Nothing of value here. We never know how this is gonna go. Scream tail, Sableye, Iron Valiant. Here we go. Oh, no way! No way! Special illustration rare. Iron Boulder. That looks crazy, dude. That looks amazing. Wow, great centering too. Far out. You know what's so funny about this card? I opened I opened Stellar Miracle and I couldn't remember the name of the paradox form of this card for the life of me. But wow, let me just see what that's actually on at the moment. And I, oh, it's a $18 card. It's definitely not the most expensive one, but you know, I, I'm looking at this list here. It's actually one of the cheaper cards. I think that's, that's actually the lowest value special illustration rate you can get, but nonetheless, nice early hit. Code card, and do we have another special illustration rare? On the way, or even an illustration rare. I'd love that ghastly. Here we go. Fortress, Hand Trimmer, and Miraidon. Let me know, do you guys play the competitive Pokemon as well? I know the competitive Pokemon scene is quite big. A lot of people really rate that. Um, I've never actually got too much into the TCG myself. I think I played it more when I was a kid, though. I was always more of a Yu-Gi-Oh fan because, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, though, it, it, I don't know if you guys play or know much about it. It's in a bit of a difficult position at the moment, and Konami's a little bit stressed, I think, with it because... Iron Jugglers and Gengar EX. Yu-Gi-Oh is in a bit of a challenging position because what's happened is the barrier to entry to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know if you guys have played Yu-Gi-Oh or if you play recently. It is a very complicated TCG. Like, man, you could write a thesis on how complicated that game has become. It is so complex. And what's happened is there's been a power creep of just like 20 years. So when we used to play, I mean, I, I actually still play. I played Master Duel on the PS5. But what happened was the game's become super, you know, complicated. And that's kind of caused the game to be a little bit of a stress because not many new players can actually enter the game, right? Problem with that is when, when new players cannot enter the TCG, the TCG cannot grow. And when a TCG cannot grow, you are pretty much having a audience that is just waiting to kind of, don't want to use the word die out or just slowly, you know, burn off. But that's actually kind of what happens if you don't have new players come in. So Yu-Gi-Oh is in a position where they kind of need to in oh, Reboot Pod and Sandy Shocks. And nice, 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 nice. I really hope that Yu-Gi-Oh can kind of market and position their brand a little bit to get younger generations involved in the game, just because I think it is a fantastic card game. I really, really love Yu-Gi-Oh, and I still do. I love the game, though there also is a few players that actually like the complexity of the game, and they kind of, I wouldn't say gatekeep the game, but they kind of like, uh, it's kind of like in Australia, right? They're like, because uh, like I, I grew up near like a, there, like we, there was a surf beach pretty close to us, like whatever it was. When you surf, right, there, everyone knows that there's a little bit of a thing. It's very hard to kind of get into surfing, not because it's a very difficult kind of sport to get into, but the challenge as well is when people get good at surfing, they kind of get very arrogant. So we're not bad. I don't mind a friendly boost box. I've been excited to open Temporal Forces because I never kind of opened the set on release. And I don't know if this set will be a good investment. That's something that I need. Ooh, I think I saw something. I think I saw something. Whether or not it's good, whether or not it's bad. Dunsparce, Breloom, and Coridon EX. In Generation 9 had an easier run than Scarlet and Violet. Ah, oh, sorry, than Sword and Shield, because when Sword and Shield released, there was this thing called Dexit or D-E-X-I-T, where they kind of like burned half the Pokedex off and they just said, hey, you can pretty much only collect I don't know. Oh, here we go. Awakening Drum, Meryl, and Makago. Another one. Wow. You'd be surprised, man. Like, these, these small hits, they add up. Like, they add up definitely, and they definitely add to the value of your hits. All right. Ooh, here we go. We just pulled the Iron Boulder. I would love to pull 
something absolutely sensational. I did. I feel like I've hit though the illustration rare. There's a fair bit of words that you can only get one special illustration rare in a box. I have hit two before, um, but I don't know. If, you know, if this is going to be one of those Iron Valley and Ancient Energy. Hey, Scizor EX, man, what a good box! Fantastic card, fantastic pull. And you know what? Like I said, I don't care about getting always the big hits. I just like pulling these cards, and that's fantastic. It's been a big week this week. It's been a massive week for me. Um, been feeling, you know, I just feel like in this new, like this world that we live in, man, it's so exhausting, dude. Like, wake up, kids for school, get them all sorted, you know, it can be, it's such an exhausting, here we go, Karate. Yeah, man, I just get kind of exhausted. Like, this week I was just like, oh, geez, I'm just pushing through, dude. Like, I'm not actually, you know, sometimes you just live to live, you know what I mean? And I feel like this week's been one of those weeks for me where I've just been kind of holding on by the a camel's nose hair, as they say. Um, and that's kind of what I feel like this week's been. Bit of a challenging week, but nonetheless, we're pushing through, and that's kind of how life works, right? You gotta be able to push through. Here we go, another EX, wow, geez. I wouldn't say it's a challenging week, but just gotta push through, and you know, life is a bit like that, especially, oh, there we go. Walking away, sensational, sweet coon. You know, just getting through it. There's a lot of things going on, you know, in my life in terms of trying to organize things, trying to, you know, I always, I hold myself very accountable to be you know, good in everything I do. And like, even when I edit my videos, I really edit to a kind of, I push myself very far to ensure Iron Thorns, to ensure that, you know, both my viewers get, you know, quality when they watch this kind of content. And also I kind of, time is the most valuable currency on planet Earth. People think it's money, no, it's time. So when people do spend time watching my content, I really value that, I really appreciate that, but I also wanna respect every viewer's time when watching it. So that's why I try to make my videos sharp, oh, sorry, sharp, sharp and succinct to ensure that you guys, you know, your time to me is incredibly valuable because I actually value time a lot. There we go, Roaring Moon. Money's important, right? M money keeps us functioning, but time is, if you ask any billionaire, what they would want more from. Trust me, they would not want more money. They would all want more time. And that is because you cannot. Time and money function very similar. They, they, they function the same way um, in terms of, it's like a currency that you have. You have like an, a limited amount of you know money and or, or some people have a limited amount of money. But you have a little, you have like a set amount of money and you have a set amount of time and you have to use that. So yeah, there was a really good personal development coach I used to listen to. His name was Dave Crenshaw. And he taught me about time management because time management was a skill I lacked very, very, I was just horrible at time management, man. Like I literally couldn't manage my, I didn't know how to use a calendar. This was before my daughter was born. And I did his course because I was just thinking, man, if I have a daughter coming out, how am I going to, you know, function without being able to, you know, like I didn't even know how to organize a calendar. I was just so like, um, Immature in a sense, right? Like I was just, you know, young dude, you know, I was 20, 22, 23 when my daughter was born. So I was just like, you know, super immature, right? So I was like, oh, and I started learning how to, you know, use a calendar and Dave Crenshaw really spoke and he really valued time management and how time management works as a skill that and ever since I've kind of did his course all those years ago, uh, it kind of stuck with me, right? All right. So I really, really, and that, that's something that all my viewers, I never want to be the kind of content creator that drains your time. I always feel like that is really rude when I watch YouTube videos and they're just trying to add watch time, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason that they do, but I don't like that. I, I feel like, you know, just just make your videos, get to the point, and then that's it. Here we go, Iron Crown. Have we got an Iron Crown in here? But definitely. I feel like this pack rip hasn't even been about the cards. It's been a bit of a venting session of my life, but that is the situation that I am currently at at the moment, right? Just feeling it. Here we go. Raichu, Boltart. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, brother. Gouge and fire. Not a bad box, this one, man. When, when I started and I, and I made this channel, I, I was just like, you know, it, YouTube's a, it, it's a it's a demanding game. Like, and I think a lot of people don't talk about that. Most of my weekends are spent now filming content, which I don't mind. Like, I, 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 how can I complain, right? I, I, it's so incredible to be able to connect with an audience all across the world. You know, I've the amount of people and people I message at the moment from all corners of the world, it's absolute, like life's just crazy like that, dude. Like for alligator, like you just don't realize how, like you put a video out in the world and it can reach, you know, millions of people. Not that my videos are doing that, but you know, maybe one day they will, but all corners, man, it's just crazy, dude. Like the, like what, what we can kind of do and, and it's, it, oh, here we go. What you can kind of do with everything in life and, and how it works now, it's just wild, man. Like 
I don't know. I've really enjoyed it, so I'm not complaining that you know. I'll be obviously here we go, Karate. It's been it's been a it's been life changing in a sense, man. Like making content, not not in the sense like oh you know. Trust me, man. Like anyone that, that focuses on YouTube, they'll all tell you like unless you're big, it's it's not crazy money, man. Like like you know you, your hourly rate would be below minimum wage. Trust me, with the amount of effort that you put in, walking wake ex. Yeah, wow, sensational. In terms of just what you get out of it, in terms of life satisfaction, I feel like life is there's an enjoyment of being able to like share your hobbies with the world, and people are able to connect with that, and they're able to be like, hey, you know what, Phil, I vibe with that, man. Like. Hey, yeah, I agree, I agree. It's just, yeah, I think that's really nice, man. And, and I've also had an outlet because I used to show Chanel, my partner, Pokemon cards. Mate, when I tell you, she used to just say, Phil, that's enough. I don't care about Carvana. Here we go, I and Valiant. I don't even have to talk about Pokemon that much to my wife anymore. I've been able to express this outlet in a, in a, in a pretty nice way online with, with a community of people. And a lot of the time, the internet can be a nasty place, right? But I found that people are really, Really friendly online, man. Like, like from what up my experience so far, people are just so nice, man. Like, like people, you know, a lot of positive comments and stuff. Here we go, Mel Metal. Ooh, the, the the latter half of the box is being a little bit nasty for sure, man. Like, just there's 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 been a you know a, a nice a nice part to this content creation journey as well, and you know, like I don't know, just definitely grateful, man. Like, like, like you know, I, I I do a lot of work and I do a lot of um, oh, I do courses all the time. I always try add more value and you know I've done well, maybe since my daughter was born maybe over 120 courses just on personal development because I believe personal inventory what kind of you know how much you can learn and better yourself it's important man it's so important to become a better person it's so important to invest in yourself and I feel like over the years of doing these courses I feel like I've got a bit of a uh, you know advice that I can share uh, not in a way that I think, like, I, I just just from learning it, dude, like, I can't explain it. Like, doing these courses, learning skills, learning how, I, I'd love to share that as well one day as well and talk to people about, you know, time management, how to be more productive, uh, Pomodoro techniques, which is kind of like a time management technique. You know, we we live in a difficult era, era, guys. And that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. We live in a challenging time, dude. Like, your attention right now, you jump on your phone, you know, you got Instagram reels, all these things are, you know, draining your energy, right? They're not only just draining your energy, but they're draining your time, right? Like, not only your dopamine, but the way your, you know, your mind, everything. It's just, it, and, and it, we have to, we don't have the skills yet to navigate this era, right? We don't have the, the skills to navigate life at the moment in the, in the sense that we, we're not kind of our, Minds haven't developed in a way to deal with this new digital era that we're consuming, right? And and it's really challenging, man. Like, you know, you come on, you know, even with kids and stuff, we're in a different time. Like, like we're meant to be, we're communal, we're a communal species, right? So we like to be in community. We like to speak with community. We like to kind of bond. And our bonding has now become somewhat digital, right? And we've also become, here we go, Iron Boulder X. Put it to you this way, man, 70 years ago, if you want to see your friend, or even less, 20 years ago, you would knock on their door and you would have this kind of way where you could get together on the street and play. That is kind of being taken away. I mean, I don't know about you, but in Australia, if I now went and knocked on my neighbor's door and just said, hey, come for a coffee, don't know how that would go down. I'm not sure if that would be exactly something that they would be too happy with, right? And I mean, that was normal 40 years ago, 30 years ago. That, that was just like how you made friends, right? So we, hey, Mudsdale. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Just making contents really helped me with that. I feel like I've been able to connect a lot. I did live in country, well, not even country. I lived in a very remote part of Queensland, uh, in, which is a part of Australia. Stunning place, right? And I just noticed, man, like, like when living in the country, or it was like, I don't know if I'd call it country. It was rural, right? Uh, rural. And it was just so amazing, man. Like the people I would meet, the amazing people I would bond with. There was, a, I felt that community, which in the city, you don't really get that much. Final pack magic. Have we got something? Here we go. This is where the Iron Crown's gonna come out. I can feel it. Iron Crown EX Final Pack Magic. There's the code card for all our online players. Here we go. Basic energy, have we got something? Pikachu, Metagross, Roserade, Exadrill. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, Whimsicott, no, oh, there, there we go. Nothing on our final pack magic, but nonetheless, that was a fun box. Alrighty, let's see what this box gave us. So here we go, our first pulls, which we have the Coridon EX, Miraidon EX, Walking Wake EX, Iron Boulder, 
Gengar AX, Faragia, don't, don't. Here we go, and then we got Awakening Drum, Reboot Pod, Lickitung Illustration Rare, awesome hit, man. We got the Mudsdale Illustration Rare, cool card. We got the Gouging Fire AX, and we got the Sizzle AX, and of course we hit the Iron Boulder Special Illustration Rare. Such a sensational card. What a cool Special Illustration Rare. And that centering is absolutely stunning. Now after all that, I do have to say that Temporal Forces to me really feels like it was the first sign of a positive shift into a more interesting era for Scarlet and Violet. I mean, you have Iron Crown, which was like the first card to show promise. And I actually really rate Temporal Forces. And I think this is a set of the times and it's very well placed within Generation 9. Though, how will Temporal forces perform in the future? Well, there's two ways to answer this, right? Number one, I think the set has sensational artworks and the special illustration rares are all holding value. And two, the set seems incredibly underrated and I'm seeing a very chilling rain-like scenario with this set. I place Temporal Forces literally in the exact same category as Chilling Rain and I think it will take some time but when the call happens and people get behind this set, you better act swiftly. However, while talking about sleeper sets, there is one set in particular that is a huge sleeper set, and that is Paldean Fates. And do you know why this is seen as such a sleeper set? There is one specific reason why this set is in such a good position to rise, and I don't have time to answer that right now, but I cover that question in great detail in this video right here. Within this video, I go over Paldean Fates and I dive deep into the set as a future investment, along with ripping open two ETBs. If you want to watch an amazing box break and learn more about Paldean Fates, then click on this video that's appearing on screen right now and I'll see you there.